Can you run this off of this? Can you run a Dometic 13.5K BTU air conditioner off a Cat INV2000 inverter generator? Want to place a wager? Wait a second, gambling is not permitted on YouTube. Cut that last part. <laughs> So the question for today is, can you run the Dometic 13.5K BTU AC off the Cat INV2000? Now, for those who have watched my other videos, you know that I previously did a full review on this Cat INV2000 inverter generator, but it was cold outside and too cold to run the air conditioner. So I did show the heat strips running off the generator successfully, but I promised I would come back and show you when it warms up if the generator can support the air conditioner and so today is that day now we just had a fresh rain and so it is super humid outside probably 100 percent humidity and the temperature is rising 81 degrees so it's the perfect time to put this generator to the test but before we do that we need to think through a couple practical steps to set us up for success and what i mean by that is anytime you're putting a heavy load on a small generator you need to think through your running watts and your starting watts that the generator can handle and on this cat inv2000 it supports a running watt of 1800 continuously and then starting watts of 2250 you know sometimes a big appliance like an air conditioner will take more wattage to get going and then it'll kind of ramp back down to a running level and so again we have 1800 running watts on the cat inv2000 and 2250 on the starting watts now for limited on how many watts we can get out of this cat inv2000 or another the way to word it would be bandwidth if we only have so much bandwidth that we can get out of this cat INV 2000 and our goal is solely to run the air conditioner at this point then we want to think about other potential loads that could be running in this Nobo 10.6 that could take away and rob us from those precious watts that we need in order to run this big powerful Dometic 13.5k BTU air conditioner so let me start it up and give you an example of what I'm talking about I'm gonna take this air switch and turn it to the on position there and then down here here we've got it right now on the off I'm going to switch it to the choke because it has not been used in a while and this will also be a good example for those wondering with a cold start what it looks like I have not used this in probably about oh maybe a week and a half two weeks and so you get an idea of what it looks like starting this with a cold start so again I've got it in the choke position here I've got my on on top of the fuel cap there and so now we're gonna crank it and get it going All right, so three pulls and we are off to go. You can hear it's on choke. I'm gonna let it warm up just a little bit. And you'll notice I've got no load plugged into the unit right now. That's how we wanna start it out with nothing attached to it. All right, so now we're gonna let it warm up. And then you'll also notice down here, we've got an echo throttle switch and that is turned off as well. And that's how we want it to be. When you're running a heavy load, you want to keep that echo switch off. There's no need for it to be throttling up and down, up and down, hunting for the right RPMs when you know you're going to be putting something heavy on it. But while that's warming up, let me just hop inside the Nobo 10.6 and give you an idea of the circuit breakers. And let's talk a little bit about the load that we're about to put on it. So this is my circuit breaker. It's kind of an all-in-one converter, charger, panel box. And you can see my 120 volt circuits right there. And my air conditioner is the second 20 amp breaker. So this guy right here. Then I also have main shore power, 30 amp breaker. I've got GFCI outlets. That's this 15 breaker, 15 amp breaker there. And then I also have the converter charger. In other words, this is an all-in-one charger. And so when I plug into AC power, it's gonna try to recharge the battery. It's a smart charger. So if the battery is pretty low. It's going to push a lot of wattage and a lot of power toward that battery to charge it up as fast as it can. Whereas if the battery is almost topped off, it's going to do kind of a light trickle charge. So when we're talking about loads and we understand that the air conditioner is probably one of the biggest loads that this rig could produce. And so we want to shut off things like this converter charger that could take away from the available wattage that we've got in this case. Let me show you what I mean. So right now I've got the air conditioner turned off, but I did leave the converter charger breaker turned on. We're gonna plug it in. And you can hear that the inverter generator ramps up just a little bit. And that tells us that it is consuming some power in that converter charger breaker. Now let's hop back inside and let me demonstrate this visually. So we're gonna take a look at the Victron BMV 712. This is a battery monitor and I'll put a card up 
and a link below in the description for the video I did on that particular install. But this basically tells us what's going on with our battery and it can be kind of helpful in situations like this. I've got it connected through Bluetooth on my phone and you can see the line item we're looking at is power, 397 watts. Now I do have a couple puck lights turned on inside. Those are only you know three to four watts each. So basically we've got a little over 400 watts of power that this converter charger is delivering to the battery. And so that is consuming watts off of our generator. And remember our generator is limited to 1800 running watts. And so with this converter charger running, that takes us down to about, let's just say 1400 watts remaining. Now, if you wanna run the Dometic 13.5K BTU air conditioner off the generator with only 1400 running watts remaining, it is not gonna happen. So what we need to do is turn off the converter charger by just flipping the breaker like this. And you can hear the generator kind of throttle down a little bit because now we're not consuming that about 400 watts approximately. And we don't have to necessarily do this, but I'm also gonna shut off the GFCI outlets. I don't have anything plugged into them, but just for demonstration, I'll shut those off as well so that all we have left on the rig is the air conditioner, the 20 amp breaker, and of course we have to have the 30 amp, the main shore power breaker still turned on. And notice if we go back to the Victron BMV 712, you can see there now we're only consuming a negative 14 watts. And that's of course the LED puck lights that I've got turned on all three of them together. And that is it right now. Now you might be wondering if you turn those breakers off, does that mean you're gonna be stuck in the RV with nothing but the air conditioner running? You got no power elsewhere? Well, you'll notice I've still got lights on. And so what's happening right now, because this is such a small RV, almost everything runs off the 12 volt system, the battery, the lithium ion battery that's in the front there. And so by turning that breaker off, all I did is turn the charger off. All my devices, my lights, my inverter, my refrigerator, everything is made of 12 volt. And so it's still running off of that 12 volt battery. So as long as I don't turn off my battery disconnect, then all my power is coming from the battery except for the air conditioner above. So the implications are if you're gonna do this, you probably wanna make sure your battery is relatively full before you turn everything else off and dedicate the generator inverter just to the air conditioner. That way you can still make use of your lights and everything else that's native 12 volt on your RV. So in review, I've gone to my breaker panel and I've cut off all the breakers except for the main shore power because that's what feeds everything. And then of course the 20 amp breaker that's feeding the air conditioner. The other thing that I need to do is think about how powerful this air conditioner is. It's got some different settings here. So it's got a low and a medium and a high output. And so if we put it on that high output, naturally it's gonna consume more watts compared to if we keep it on that low output. And furthermore, you know, 13.5 kBTU air conditioner is pretty oversized for a small Nobo 10.6 rig like this one here. So really, even if we had shore power available, we still would wanna keep it on that low setting so that it runs longer and gets rid of more humidity. Then we can change this temperature dial pretty much wherever we want it to. We'll just keep it on the max cool so it runs continuously. All right, so moment of truth. I'm gonna take the controller switch here and go from the off position to the low cool position. But don't get too excited because initially it's just the fan that turns on on the AC and then the compressor kicks in in just a little bit. It's the compressor that really pulls the maximum starting watts. Now for transparency, I'll go ahead and start my stopwatch here so you can see what, how much time we're running on the AC. And I am looking forward to some of this cool air because it is really hot and humid outside. All right, so we're just over 45 seconds of running the AC off the Cat Eye and V2000. And let me just give you an idea of what's going on outside. So obviously you can hear that the generator is running at full throttle because this is a very hefty load for it to pull. Let me also give you some temperature readings inside. So I've got this little infrared temperature reader. So we've got 78 degrees on the wall. And then let's go up here to the uh, outlet of the air conditioner. So you can see we're already at 69.5 degrees coming out. So that gives you kind of a baseline for what we're starting at. And so now what I'm gonna do is step away for a little bit and come back in about perhaps 10 minutes and we'll see where we are on the temperature and if the CAT INB 2000 can sustain this Dometic 13.5K BTU air conditioner. All right, so we are looking at almost 13 minutes there, 12 minutes and 50 seconds. We've been running the AC off the CAT INB 2000. And before we go inside and look at the temperature reading, we just give you a look at the control panel. You can see there it is still green 
on the power indicator and that's good if you see the red light then you know it got tripped it got overloaded basically too much power was pulled from it but we're still on the green so that's good and I did some more sound tests in my other video again I'll put a card up and a link below for that one but let me just show you real quickly we're standing about three feet away we're looking at about 89 decibels at full throttle and then if we go to the front corner of the rig probably about 10 feet away 81 decibels and then if we come back even further we are about 24 feet away right now and 76 77 decibels so it's a pretty quiet generator but it is really hot out here and so i'm looking forward to going inside into the air conditioned space oh that feels so nice all right let me pull out my temperature infrared reader and we'll get some readings real quick All right, so on the wall, we're looking at 67.7 degrees. And then if we go up to that outlet there, 52 degrees, which is perfect. Usually, you know, whether you're at home or in an RV, the air conditioner should be able to change your temperature by about 20 to 25 degrees from the ambient temperature going through the air conditioner. So we're right where we should be. So yeah, that's over 12 minutes running the Dometic 13.5 kbtu air conditioner off the cat inv 2000 and i'm going to come inside here because it is really hot and humid so we're back inside the rv and it feels so nice in here it was getting really hot and humid out there but it feels nice and dry and comfortable here inside the rv and now we are at almost 18 minutes running the air conditioner off the inverter generator and let me just kind of give you some some final thoughts on doing this so first off it's normal for you to hear the generator ramp up and down maybe every 5, 10, 15 minutes while you're running a big heavy air conditioner like this one. And that's because the compressor is going to be cycling on and cycling off. And so every time it does that, it's going to make the generator sound like it's struggling because it's taking all those starting watts, those 2250 starting watts that are available, and it's probably sucking just about all of them out of there. And so that is normal to hear. And it seems like on the low setting with the temperature all the way on the cold side that for me it was about every six minutes or so that the compressor would cycle off and then about two or three minutes later cycle back on and so you will hear the generator really struggle every time that happens now in full transparency when I've done this before I've kind of gotten mixed results so sometimes when I'm firing the air conditioner up initially off the generator sometimes that initial start is just too much for the generator handle and so it'll come with the red overload light and uh, then you got to turn the generator off and start it up again that seems to only happen about one out of every maybe four or five times and i'm not quite sure why it's doing that but you know it's obviously at the limits of the generator and so it could just be that sometimes it pulls a little bit more than other times but once you get the air conditioner on and this is again my experience it seems to be just fine cycling on and cycling off repeatedly after that point. So it's really just kind of getting over that first hurdle of getting the air conditioner to power on that very, very first time. But let's talk about whether this is a good idea long term. So obviously we are maxing out the capabilities of the CAT IMV 2000. And when you think about it, it's just kind of like your tow vehicle for your RV. You know, if you've got a giant 44 foot fifth wheel and it weighs 15,000 pounds, yes, you can probably tow it with a smaller three-quarter ton truck but it's going to be at the limits of your truck and so the overall experience is not going to be very comfortable and, and you might be on edge while you're towing so it's kind of similar with this air conditioner you know we are really pushing the generator to the max and obviously you saw I had to turn everything off on the breaker there and so we can't charge the rig at the same time and we really can't use any other 120 volt outlet or anything else on the, the rig or the generator while it's powering the AC because that's taking everything it's got. So should you do this? You know, if you're really looking for a solution to run the Dometic 13.5K BTU air conditioner, I'd probably recommend stepping up to a generator that has a little bit more on the running watts and starting watt side, maybe in the 2500 range or for the running watts and maybe, you know, 28, 2900 for the starting watts because that's really going to more comfortably service your needs if you've got an air conditioner like this one. But as you saw, it can be done. It's just not perhaps the best idea long term. 
so that concludes our video today i hope you found it helpful knowing that you can indeed run a 13.5 btu air conditioner on a small generator here like the cat imv 2000 it's just going to be pulling everything it's got and so really i would recommend if you're going to be buying a generator and you want to run a 13.5 k btu air conditioner you're probably going to be better suited with something that has running watts you know higher maybe in the 2500 range or above you know starting watts closer to 3000 and that's really going to give you a little bit more bandwidth so that you can run other 120 volt devices at the same time plus you don't want to be you know making your generator struggle because maybe that extra wear and tear and strain every time the compressor kicks on could maybe over the long term not be the best for the generator but i really appreciate your comments and feedback below they're incredibly helpful to the community as always thanks for watching